Good morning. So let's try this again. I was on here and something glitchy was happening. So hopefully this will work this time. Sorry about that. Yeah, well, I don't know if you guys like believe and know about this stuff, but Mercury is in retrograde. <clears throat> and that means like, like electronic stuff, like change, like things like stirring up. That's all supposed to happen from now until the 22nd of the month, which seems just a little crazy, a little long, but I blame it on that. Hi, Susie. How are you? Hi, Bonnie. Good. Everybody thinks this is a little bit better. Good. I think I made the right choice to turn it off and turn it on. <clears throat> Since I didn't start, we didn't miss anything, right? So I'll wait a couple seconds and just randomly talk <laughs> just to make sure that it's all working. So yes, we had a nice time at graduation. It was a beautiful evening. It was outside and it's so nice to be with people again. It feels wonderful. I think I need to plan another in-person workshop. I have one coming up in, in October in Connecticut and it's like a four day workshop. I've never done one that long, but I'm excited about it. It's at a beautiful like bed and breakfast. So if anybody wants to um, join me, if you, it's there's um, information about it on my website and a link to the website of the woman who's organizing it. Or if you can't find it or if you have any questions, you can always just message me. Hi, Faye. How are you? Okay. So today, in, in the spirit of June, we're going to paint. Now wait. Let me turn this around. Strawberries. Um, I didn't check. We always get strawberries. Um, sounds very Pennsylvania Dutch, but I'd say out the road which means not far from my house, somewhere where I drive by all the time, at a little strawberry farm. And that's the only thing they do is grow strawberries. So that little stand in their little barn next to their house opens up just for strawberry season, and then it closes for the rest of the year. So I need to go drive by and see if the strawberries are starting yet. I would think so, because I saw them at Roots, where I usually go on Tuesdays, and I went yesterday and bought some additional peonies, because you can never have too many of those, right? So, let's get started. And I have a couple of, of fun new colors. And part of that was this, the thought of doing this, was inspired by one of my new colors that I'm super excited about. I mean, it's not anything earth shattering, but I love sometimes when stuff gets a little boring, you know, you just need to, you just need to uh, shake things up. And I bought this color, which I love. It's called Cobalt Turquoise. I don't know how I've missed it, never used it before, but it's perfect for the for this. Sometimes I have trouble quite getting that color, and I think this, this is going to help. Yes, at Lancaster County Stands. Anita, and at, um, do you go to the market in Reading? I used to work at that market, the um, farmer's market in Reading. So I worked for Weavers, whoops, I'm in the wrong spot here, which it was is a meat and cheese place. And I worked there from the time I had my working papers until I graduated from college. And I would often work at the market in Reading. They had markets all over the place. Hello to the UK. So I haven't painted strawberries in a while. And I've painted this photo before. I think I need to get some new photo reference this year of strawberries because I need to not miss strawberry season. Like I missed ranunculus season. Like how did that happen? There's a place near me that actually grows ranunculus. I was excited about it. I went there too early and then I forgot to check again. Oh, Cherry Hall has great strawberries. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, that's so far away, though. That takes a big chunk out of my day to go to Cherry Hill, but that does sound fun. Yeah, I can't wait till I'm not so precious with my time. I always think, oh, that's going to take too much time, but I would love to go do that. Oh, I love going in that direction. My, um, my best friend from high school just bought a fixer-upper property down that way. So I imagine I'll be down that direction a little bit more often than I have been, like toward southern Lancaster County. Okay, I'm just mapping out where I'm going. 
oh, we need a were they? Is that why I missed it? Because I had called and they were like, no, we don't have any. And it's like, oh, how did they do that? So maybe that's what it was. It, like it wasn't even a good season. It has been a good... She says, congratulations on your daughter's graduation. They look like a fun bunch. Love the strawberry, Susie. Good, Susie. I'm glad. Yes, it, they are so nice to all be together. And my... Um, my nephew. So my family has in, I think, three generations had, um, I like to call them a bonus baby. And Isabel's my bonus baby. Um, and so I have, my nephew has a son who graduated with Isabel. So my nephew's son and Isabel are the same age. Um, because my nephew, I'm the bonus baby in my family, and my nephew is only 10 years older than me. So in my family, um, like all my nieces and nephews are closer in age to me, actually, than I am to my sisters, which is kind of fun. It keeps our family close because there's always young kids in the family, too. And he said, mine were beautiful last year, but they died off before they bloomed this year. Yeah, I had trouble. I planted them too, and I thought it's because I did something wrong because I just got new ones. I got ordered some from um, uh, the farm at Oxford, which is someone I follow on Instagram, and I love all their flowers. So I bought a few, but they really didn't, they really didn't do well. I thought it was me, but maybe it was not totally me because <laughs> I thought maybe I planted them too close to the, not deep enough, or I wasn't sure. And you know, I always do a lot of things in a, in a mad rush. So that could have been the problem too, but maybe they just weren't ready. But Anita, do you have to pull those little corms out and replant them each year? Oh, Ellen, are you the bonus too? Yeah, my sisters were 16 and 18 when I was born. Now I only have, well, my only my one sister is still living, but um, yeah, it's fun having all my nieces and nephews um, closer in age to me it's like having you know it's uh and they're also close to my kids so it's it's very fun let's see this has to come here maybe i'll start putting in some of that but another uh, rosemary i'm not sure what went wrong oh anita what went wrong with the flowers yeah i don't know Oh, wait, I wanted to get more of a turquoise-y. Oh, wait, I have green on my brush and I don't want it. <clears throat> I also bought another fun color that I want to play around with. It's called Interference Blue. I always have the interference colors in my palette. Um, not really in my palette. I, need, I want to play with them more, but in kind of my box of paints that I never use for acrylics and I just kind of randomly bought one the other day for um sorry I'm thinking here a little bit for my oil paint so we'll play with that a little bit today too and see what happens with it yeah the flowers a surprise bonus or a surprise yeah both a bonus surprise Nancy 10 years different. My kids were, Alex and Emily were 10 and um, 7 when Isabel was born. And it's nice. They're very close. What colors did you use? Oh, for the dark area. I'm kind of mixing my dark colors. So there, it's blue, a little bit of the Van Dyke brown, and I think maybe a little bit of purple. I'm just kind of picking up colors and mixing them on my palette. I could even go darker with this kind of trying to keep it warm. So um, the, I'll put a little bit more brown in there. The uh, Van Dyke Brown and uh, Ultramarine Blue are warm colors and I'm gonna kind of keep warms in the background, keep my background colors warm. And um, the colors that come forward, I'm gonna do more cool colors. I mostly use oils, but I have been playing around with a lot of acrylics. That's, I was. Um, working in acrylics this morning before I came live here with you guys. 
I'm playing around with some fun things for Inspiring Art Collective, so I enjoy both, but oils are my go-to. I mean, that's my favorite. I love the, the texture of the oils. I love the butteriness. Um, I'm still not real good at acrylics because it dries so quickly that it's a little challenging for me, although it is a mixed blessing. Like when I do an oil painting, it needs to dry for weeks before I can ship it. And with an acrylic painting, I've done a few large acrylics and I I do love that um, I can send them to someone like right away. It's so liberating not to have to wait. Putting in some where my dark greens will be. So yes, I'd say either either but mostly oils. Are your workshops done with acrylic? No, my my workshops are in oils. So it definitely is my comfort zone. Yeah, I love oil paint. Besides that, yeah. And I do want to learn more about acrylics and be able to share more of that. But. And I try to keep, like, if people are concerned about, like, the healthiness of using oil paints, like, I really, my system, the way I do it is really not, um, I don't know, not unhealthy. I don't know what term I'm trying to use, but I try to keep it as healthy as possible so that we're not using, you know, things that aren't, aren't good for you. Dark in there. I have enough mapped out to know where I'm headed with this. Oh, good, Anita. Oh, I'm glad you love it. Who is that, Ellen? Shadav Jane. Does, oh, she does an online course in acrylics. I should watch it. Okay. I think that's good. I think I'm going to go in with the pigment sticks. I don't think I need to fuss with this layer. I was starting to write a new blog post today because I heard um, in the, the valedictorian all the speeches yesterday were kind of inspiring me a little bit about um, the whole thing of, oh, I blew up here too, of perseverance and learning and trying new things and failing and succeeding. Like sometimes I forget. I get frustrated with myself like when I'm working on things that are really challenging that that process never ever ends. It doesn't end with art. It doesn't end with anything. Like you always think you're working on something and you learn it and you're like, okay, I learned. I'm finished learning now, but there is no finished learning ever. Oh, I get the grid. I use an app on here. It's called grid. See this little thing down here? It's called grid hashtag. And Oh, see there, I had already done that one. It's really easy. You just go into your library up here, you pick a photo, and it adds the grid to it. And then you just hold your finger down, and you can save it just like that. So grid, it's either called hashtag grid or grid hashtag. I always forget. Oh, the pigment stick, Jane, what color brand? This is RNF pigment sticks. That's what I always use, RNF. And this is... Uh, I think this is Provence Blue. Please talk about your upcoming course for someone asking. Oh, thank you, Gail. Um, it is in Connecticut at a beautiful bed and breakfast. Um, it's in October. It's from, so you get there Sunday evening and like meet everybody and relax and hang out. And then on, then I'm going to teach uh, my plan is to do um, autumn in can, autumn in New England is what I'm calling it. So we're going to paint all things autumn, like like pumpkins and maybe apples. Or good morning, Emily. Thanks for coming yesterday. Do you do the underpainting in diluted oils and then oil pigment sticks? Yes, the underpainting was um, with this product called Zest It. <clears throat> mixed with transparent colors, just kind of map out where I'm going. And then I use pigment sticks just to keep myself loose. Kind of, it just kind of is fun. I love these pigment sticks. I love how creamy they are. 
and I love letting little pieces of it show through. So yes, the course will be um, for four days. I think we go home on Thursday morning. So most days there'll be, you know, some fun like yoga or something in the morning if you want to do something like that. And then I will teach in the, during the day and then we'll do dinner together. And one of the days I think we'll go on a field trip to somewhere in Connecticut together, which would be really fun. I love my in-person teaching is besides actually making art, that's my other favorite thing is in person. Fave, fave. Thank you. A beautiful, yes, it'll be beautiful to do that in, in Connecticut in, in the fall. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. And I'm looking forward to like spending that much time creating art. Like even here I don't because I'm always working. So I'm taking off of work to do this and I think it'll be really really fun and you don't need any of this I'll, I'll bring all the supplies with me so you don't need any of that I think everything's included unless maybe the field trip if there's a cost with that but I don't think it'd be a big deal New England I know New England in the fall be so pretty she, halfway across the world online would be great I do. I have a course. I have an online oil painting course um, that's in session right now. And I should do, I'll do another session of it either in the fall or early next year. I should do it in the fall. I just have to decide if I have the energy for it. It really takes a lot of energy to do that. You think once you make a course, it's easy. But I also um, do lives on Facebook each week that kind of go in, in more in depth of what we learned about. Like I have one of those today at one o'clock. And I have a I have a full-time job too. So it's sometimes it gets to be a lot. But yes, probably in the fall. And then I have my inspiring art collective, which is um kind of more of a free form membership where you pay once a once a month and then there's content that comes out twice a month, at least twice a month, and just learn all kinds of things. Like you learn, um, like the, la the last, what did we do last week? We did, um, I don't, I honestly don't even remember what we did last week. I think this week, oh, we I did a dog portrait. I showed everyone how I do animal portraits and keep them accurate looking. We're in Connecticut. Oh my gosh, that's a really good question. I can't remember. I want to say it's like the... I don't know. Hudson River Valley, is that a place in Connecticut? I don't know Connecticut, so I can't remember. But the thing, if you go to my website, there's a tab up at the top called Learn, and under Learn, it has that one there. The dog, thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Oh, my goodness. Isn't it terrible? I forget everything. So there's my beginning, and I'm going to mix colors. Let me pull this over a little bit. Oh, this is the other fun color I got. It's called Interference Blue. So it makes things look a little iridescent. I think that'd be fun. Glass, glass and last near Hartford. Yes, yes, yes. Thanks, guys. Okay. So I, of course, need reds, darks, turquoises, and greens. And I put that little, this fun color up here. Maybe I'll mix that with some of this Interference Blue. That would be neat. You're there right now. Isn't that fun? I've never been there. To Gl Glastonbury. I'm excited to go there. Like, I don't ever go to Connecticut. It's not that far from here. It's just not a on my route to anywhere. So I need... Um, Really dark darks for that background. I'm going to put a little bit of this purple in there too to get that color really dark. I could use black. I might need black, but I doubt it. I think I'll be okay with that. It's a nice, nice warm dark. Exciting Glastonbury. No, never. Do you use those oil sticks on acrylic paints? No, Melissa, you can't. Well, you, you could do an acrylic underneath painting and then 
do the oil sticks over top, but you can't do the opposite because the oil takes a long time to dry and you have to let it um, like dry gently. So um, I wouldn't use them together unless you just wanted to do an acrylic underpainting and then that on top. That's kind of a boring color right there. I don't even like that. I'm getting rid of that, guys. I'm wiping that off. That's totally not anywhere in the palette that I want. Okay, thank you. Are you there on vacation? All right, I need to go to more red with this. <clears throat> Not that, I don't know what that color was, but I didn't like it. Mm. Got more of a real strawberry red, but I need those dark areas than the true red areas. Oil pastels on acrylic now. Like when I do my acrylic paintings, I play, play with other things to kind of add that spontaneity. Like um, these are from these um, Stabilos. They're called woodies. Like I like make marks with those or I have like those Coran Dash. I never know how to say those. And they're not reachable from where I'm sitting right now. Things like that instead of... Um, anything oil because then oil takes forever to dry and the charm in my opinion oh you work for the town oh I never knew that that's wonderful you would know everything then um let me put a little bit of this in here making maps and more oh that's fun like the, those like graphic maps that people use to get around, is that what you mean? It's kind of fun maps that show all the different stores in the town. I'm sure a company makes those. And you kind of highlight areas. I think that's good. I have that dark brown. Now I need some greens. Greens are kind of cool. Yeah, that's a nice shade of green there. Get a little lighter. <clears throat> so, Vina, do you do graphic design for the town? I'm excited to go there. Make that lighter. So, where's everybody from? You want to put in where you're from? Some people have already said. Bonnie says, for the October workshop, do you you said you have all the supplies. Do you mean that you supply the paint, paper, brushes? Yep. Yes, because I like um, when I teach. I've only ever done it this way where I bring the supplies because then I know that you're using the same things I am. I think one of my first workshops, I let people decide if they wanted to bring their own things, and they did. But then even, yep, it includes lodging too. Yep. Um. And then afterwards, when I asked everybody, you know, their input of everything, they all said that they, they would rather just have me bring the supplies. So I only, I just do it that way. I mean, if you wanted to bring your own supplies, I certainly wouldn't care, but <clears throat> you could use both your own and some of mine if you want. And you probably, a lot of you guys might have a lot of the same supplies as me now, but I've, I've found that, like, if, if I don't do it that way and people come and their supplies are different, then they get frustrated if they don't get the same results. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm going to use a little bit of this interference blue with that to see what it looks like. St. Louis, Austin, Texas. It's This is kind of, it's got kind of a, can you see that little graininess to it? But it, it makes the paint look a little um, opalescent kind of uh, that, that's not the word I want, but it's, um, let me get it in here and see what it looks like mixing. I love mixing colors. I'm sorry for the shadows, but I'm just holding it. It's hard. I'm looking through my phone as I'm mixing. It's weird. Can't get that piece. Ah. 
Do you see it's got it's got a little bit of a texture and it's a little opalesce op, op, I'm gonna get a little bit more in there. Let's see if it lightens it a little bit. Sorry that I'm holding my phone, but I want you to see being mixed a little. We'll see what it looks like in the painting. It feels like icing actually. When you mix it with that, it feels like icing. I brought supplies once, a lot of baggage more. Yes, it's easier, yes use if I just bring it all. I have to start thinking about all of that. Not yet. But that's almost like a perfect color for the... It is fun. I never, I didn't think about that, but especially with that texture of the interference color in there, it feels just like icing. Looks like icing too, doesn't it? New York City... Oh, that blue. I know. Isn't that blue wonderful? Um, I need to make a darker bit of this blue. So I'm going to use a little bit of my dark background color in it. Because there's a lot of kind of shadowy areas in there. Maybe a little bit more blue in there. I think that's a good start. Would the workshop be a challenge for someone who has never done oils? I've used, no, Bonnie, I don't think so. I think you can totally do it. If you're familiar, like, just with art, I think you can totally do it. Probably even if you're not. I've had people come to my workshops that um, have very little experience. I just do this method that you're watching now. I just go into more detail with it. Would you guys who are on here have been to my workshops? Would you say someone who hasn't painted? Ellen, you started. And you, did you do oils before you met me? Okay. <clears throat> Let me put in my darks. I'm going to use my big brush to put in my darks. No, <laughs> thank you. Now I want to keep it spontaneous. Like I keep going back and forth. I'm always trying to keep my paintings very loose and spontaneous and I'm on a roll for a while, and that spontaneous is there, and then after a while, I don't know, like I lose it again, and I just kind of bring it back again, because so I like to let little bits of it show through. Certainly patient enough to help it. Yes, I am patient. Um, I had no experience at my first work, and it was so much fun. Good. Thank you, Anita, and Anita's paintings are beautiful. Yes. So, yes, you do not need to have experience. I didn't think so. I did have one person who, who I think, uh, like, left. Ellen, I think you might have been there in New Hope. Ellen Core. Um, but I think she was expecting it to be, like, one of those paint party things, you know, where you just make a circle and then you do the next thing. Because she said she expected it to be step by step. And I'm like, I think the way I paint is totally step by step. But otherwise, everyone's been super happy. I say, if you can work with other mediums, you can definitely work with Kim. <laughs> Thanks, Ellen. You guys are wonderful. Yeah, I need to do another workshop here in Lancaster, too. To get through this next uh, piece of time. So I'm getting ready for this show in Lancaster. And um, yeah, I have a lot happening all good, all fun stuff. Just putting them where my really dark areas are. Kind of just dancing around here looking for spots. Um. Ellen said, I thought there was someone at the Lancaster farm in Alder. Yes. Oh, maybe that was it. Yeah. And I try to keep every, you know, when we do this, to keep everybody confident. I think staying confident in the process is, like, so important. Because it really is just fun. And you can't get, like, 
precious with it either because that's how you learn. Like I do things, I mess up, I change my mind, you know, that's what this, I don't know, I started talking about the the speeches and writing, I was writing a blog post this morning, I need to finish that up, maybe I'll post that at the same time as this <clears throat> and send it out with my next newsletter. I'm going to let, I like that blue reflection right there. That's so pretty. I wonder if I can pull a little bit of that color over here. Yep, I did. I just picked a little bit up and moved it over there. Good morning, Christina. I'm going to sip up my coffee. I'm a bit lost in thought here. Weird sound outside. Um, yeah, my daughter Emily took, Emily, are you still on here? She took a cool, um, I loved one of the favorite pictures from last night. She took a uh, boomerang of the girls throwing their graduation caps in the air. And it's so cute. Ellen, did all your kids graduate from Hemfield? I graduated from Hemfield too. Ethiopian fat cow coffee. You bet, Ellen. That's what I'm drinking, my fat cow coffee. I had a broken refrigerator for like the entire week. It has been horrible. Like I have one in my garage and that's what we were using as the fridge. But um, someone came and fixed it for us. It's, it's hard finding things now and it's also hard getting things repaired, which is awful. But he came and fixed it. So now I have my half and half in my fridge, in my kitchen. Talk about appreciating the simple things in life. You don't know how good you got it until you don't have it anymore. <laughs> Let me see here. Oh, you did, Allie Payne Art. Where do you live, Allie? No, my kids. Oh, to Lancaster Catholic. Yep, that's a good school, too. Yeah, I graduated from Hemfield also a long, long time ago. Yeah, one of my friend, high school friends was there, her... Goddaughter was graduating, and I was talking to her for a while. And she, and actually, her goddaughter is going to senior week with my daughter. They're friends, and she was talking about when we went to senior week. And and uh, it was funny. I said to Isabel, I said, you know, I would have never in a million years imagined that like my friend Phyllis's goddaughter and you would be friends and going to senior week together back when we went to senior week all those years ago. I love that. I grew up in, oh, you did, live in Mount Joy now. My maiden name was Headings. Oh. Yes, Allison. Yes. I didn't even know that was you. Huh. You you had a baby recently, didn't you? I don't know how time's flying, but I didn't even know that was you. I had no idea. Of course I know your parents. <laughs> this is so much fun. Love sipping on my coffee and watching you paint here. I'm glad you're enjoying it. I'm enjoying sipping on my coffee and painting with you guys, hanging out with me. I was saying a lot, when I first started doing this, I would get nervous about it. And now I just look forward to it. Because it's, I'd be doing this whether you were here or not. So it's just as easy to do it with, I just have to look over to make sure I'm not missing any comments. But otherwise, this is what I'd be doing this morning anyway. I've been working on doing these little ones. So I had made, um, 
you had a baby. He's two and a half now. That's, I think I saw you at Weaver's when you were pregnant. When I was talking about that first job I had, and that's where Allison worked too, Allie. Um, I need a dark green in this area, I think. I need that white spot screaming out at me there. I gotta do something with that because I get uh, distracted by it. And it, part of this is being patient too. Like I'm building up the underneath area and trying not to like um, get distracted with wanting to put my, my light colors in right away. It's actually challenging to be patient, but it just, I always say art teaches me patience. It's something I'm not good at. And I love that those blues and greens, like that, the pigment sticks, as much as I can let some of that show through, I try to, because I love how they look. Someone's trimming bushes, I think, inside today. Yes, and this is making me hungry for strawberries. I'm going to have to go see if I can get some today. Every year I want to make like strawberry shortcake or something, and I never get around to it just because of being too busy, but I'm going to try this this year to make that happen. Of course, then there's the calorie part of it too that I always avoid. But fresh strawberry pie is worth the cheat, right? Get the white right here. What's everybody having today? Coffee or tea? Or neither? I'm having my... Oh, I was talking about my coffee already because I have my half and half in the kitchen. Simple pleasures. Oh, Emily, come home for some strawberry shortcake. Okay. Emily, did you see Allison Headings was on here watching? I'm sure Emily's working and not paying attention to my painting. Coffee, coffee with oatmeal, milk. That's fun. Let's put some of this interference color in here. I want to leave it a little thick. It'll take longer to dry. Going to have tea, matcha, green tea, latte. Mary Eileen, I don't know that I've ever had matcha. I think I went, I had ice cream the other day at a place and they had something with matcha tea and I didn't try it because I wanted the ice cream. Just got in from the garden. What a treat to see strawberries in progress. Yes, strawberry season. All the summer seasons. I always say strawberries are my favorite or um, corn season's my favorite. Well, they're all my favorite. Summer, anything. Peaches, like you just go from one to the next. It's a little... Okay, right there. I like to let be a little thick. Try one at Starbucks. Okay, I will do that, Mary Eileen. I get Isabel to get one for me because she goes to Starbucks like regularly. Ellen and Mary Eileen came to my workshop together last year. That was that last workshop before COVID started, right? Started, that's a weird term, but 
happened. That's good for those boxes. And really, they are, that color is perfect for them. Did you take this photo or have a place online you recommend finding them? I took this photo. I try to take most of my photos, but there is, there's a wildlife one that I just found out about that you can get like birds. And they might be, they do have food. I actually just downloaded one of a monarch butterfly that I need to paint. Um, if you message me, I'll send you what that website is. But I, and they might have food. I'm not sure. But I think you take beautiful photos. So I would think that you could take your own photos. Yes. Your um, Instagram feed's gorgeous. Yeah, so I do. I try to take my own, my own photos. I do get a little obsessive about it sometimes. Like, I'll just be sitting somewhere or doing something. I'm like, oh, I got to take a photo of that. How many people can be at the October workshop? I have no idea how many have signed up. I need to ask her that question because it doesn't, it's not through me. Um, the lady that owns the bed and breakfast is coordinating all of it, which I love. I get to do the fun part, but not the, the what I think of as the chore part of it all. <clears throat> So I don't know how many have. And I think she was going to limit it to maybe 10. Um, but I should ask her. All right. Does that look, look dimensional? Yes. Um, whoops. Maybe I need to go to a smaller brush. No, not yet. I'm still using this big brush. The same big brush that I started with. Can you guys hear that sound outside of my house of someone trimming their, it's probably my neighbor trimming his uh, bush. Seems so loud to me. And I'll put some seeds on here, but I want to just keep it very subtle. Because if you put too many on there, then you get, I don't want people to like look at the painting and just look at the seeds. I want them to get that. Oh, that's what I was talking about and <clears throat> thinking about a lot last week. It's not about painting strawberries. It's about painting strawberry nests, the feel, the energy, the, what strawberries, the feeling of the strawberries more so than actually thinking about painting strawberries. I don't know that I'm saying that correctly, but hopefully you know what I mean that dark. I want to push that one back a little bit. So I'm going to just do a soft edge here. Not push that back a lot. Edger. You can hear the edger. No music. I can't hear music either, which I'm really bummed about, but that's all right. I don't know. It must not even be on. I think I had a glitchy morning when I, this didn't come on right. And then who knows? It's all good. Yeah, doesn't Harry know I'm doing this right now? <laughs> no, he does not. I'm all for progress and taking care of their yard, though. It's always good. All right, I should do some of my greens now. What time is it? 48. Oh, yeah, I need to be paying attention to time. All right, I'm going to get a smaller brush, work on my greens, and then do some a little bit. How do I decide when finished? Well, that's a little bit of a subtle thing that I'm always learning also. I usually decide that I'm finished when my mind starts to wander and I'm not focusing on what I'm doing anymore. But I think that's partly because I'm so trained in painting in the morning before work that um, like I only have a certain amount of time to paint. And I'm so used to painting like for an hour or a little over an hour that after that time's up, I almost can't even focus on it anymore, <laughs> which has been good because it forces me not to overwork a painting. 
because I get to a certain point and it's like I need to just walk away. And usually when I, you come back and work on a little bit more, but usually if you do that, a lot of times you are finished. Because once you start, um, oh, another good gauge is too, if you start making um, brush strokes that aren't intentional, that you're just kind of dabbing around, like your brush is just doing stuff and you're not consciously thinking about what you're doing, that probably means you should be finished. Because I try, as much as it kind of looks maybe like I'm not, I try to make intentional brush strokes and really think about the marks I'm making and not like push things around in my painting. I'm sorry, I'm going to pick up. Okay, goodbye. Have a good day. <clears throat> little bit of this a little white there that I don't want it's getting close and see I've left that some of these spontaneous bits of the color from those pigment sticks I'm letting them sh show through as I would call it completely on purpose by accident, they're showing through. There is such a thing. Like I try to let it happen, but I don't I don't worry about it if it doesn't happen, but some of the parts of doing a painting, I feel like it some of it just happens. You can try to be in control of it, but letting the spontaneous happen is the best part. Looking forward to it's done. This is Korea. Hi, Korea. Your strawberries have a lot of volume. Good. All right, a little bit more greens. What is it? A fifty one. Feel like this is a little. Um, I'll get back there. And I'm going to let that, I like how that looks in there. And some more of this bright green. And it's partly looking at your reference and then not. You know, like I'm thinking about what my reference photo has, but I don't want it to be exactly like it. I'm not worrying about that. Like I do it to a degree and then I sort of stop and and do what I think looks good, more so than thinking about um, what the, making it accurate, I guess is the word I'm looking for. They look delicious, they do. Yes, I'm gonna have to try and go get some today. I mean, that's about enough of that, I think. <clears throat> Better than the photo. Thanks, Chris. Yes, that's always the goal is to have it. Now, I think I'm going to get a small brush and go in here and do just little bits of that. Oh, you know what I want to do? I forgot. I wanted to do a little bit of that. Um, actually, I have no idea what to call it. Uh, a little bit of this, like... Mm -hmm. white area, whatever that is. That makes it have a little more strawberryness too, right? Oops. It's got a little boxy right there. Let me soften that. Okay. Sorry if I'm what are you working? Oils. Yes, this is oil paint. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Let me do a little bit. Um. My brush is a little. All right, I need a little yellow in there, I think. Make it pop a little more. Like 
I don't want to do too much of that, just a little bit. Do you ever use any drying mediums? Courtney, um, generally only if I'm doing a commission and it needs to be delivered before I know I can ever dry it. I sometimes we use um this that helps it look in. Um and not not that I mean there it's totally nothing wrong with using liquid. Um I'm just not in the habit of it. So maybe I should use it more and have my paintings dry faster. Because it's a lot like I often sell my paintings um right after I paint them and then I have to keep track of all the paintings and where they need to go and when they're dry and and for a disorganized person that is gets tricky sometimes. Or always. That's almost enough. Um, now I'm just thinking about it. Um, I feel like I could use a little bit of more detail in here, a little bit like so. This has that highlight area on my brushes. I'm getting a little too, uh, uh, I don't know what the word is, detailed, more detailed in this than I want to be. So I'll get a bigger brush. That's better. I think I just like the little knot. I don't want to work that in. Like how soft that looks, like it makes me want to do that, but I don't. I just want it to be a brush stroke, not smoothed into anything. If that makes any sense. Because that was getting too detailed, and that's what I don't want to do. Couple more little dots and I think I'm finished. Oh, I don't like that one. Get rid of that. Um, and now I'm just looking around to see if I miss anything. But now at this point, like if I, I'm feeling like I'm starting to work around in it and not, I don't need to. Like, I think I just need to put my brush down. <clears throat> so I'm going to sign it. I guess I'll do it right here. Oops. And I'll show it to you. Hachi. So, oh, I still always has a reflection <clears throat> is that better like I love this no wait, let me see if I can do it better it doesn't look very crisp does it for you I love that area in there where it like those colors are showing through that's what I'm always going for so I think I oops, whoops I can't even tell you how often <laughs> I now wait let me turn this around how often I drop paintings just have to wipe them off and start again, which is good practice. Always good practice. So thanks for coming and hanging out with me today. This was fun. I hope you have a fabulous day. Um, and maybe you get to have some strawberries today. And I'll do this again next week. And let me know if you have any questions. And I'll save this as usual. It'll be on my website, on my blog. So I have a blog on my website where I write some things. Um, if you want to be on my email list, just send me a message and I'll add you if you're not already. Oh, good. I'm glad you came to watch it, Michael. Bye, Donna. Bye, Laura. Bye, Chris. See you guys. See you next week.